Welcome to Electro Online. Our next problem is. <laughs> Welcome to Electro Online. The next problem asks us to find the maximum size triangle, the maximum area of the triangle that fits inside that semicircle of radius R. You can see that the width of the triangle is B and the height of the triangle is A. How do we do that? Well, after we draw the diagram, step one, we need to determine what's being maximized. And of course, in this case, we're trying to maximize the area. And let's call it A. And of course, now we need an equation for that area. And since it's a rectangle, the area is equal to A times B. That's simple enough. But we have the area in terms of two variables. We want the area in terms of only one variable. Therefore, we're going to need a constraint so we can relate A to B. So what's our constraint? Well, if I look at this triangle right here, we can see that the hypotenuse is R, this side is A, and this side is half the width B over 2. And Pythagorean theorem tells us that R square is equal to A square plus B over 2 square. Which means I can solve this equation for one of the variables in terms of the other. For example, I can solve that for B, put it in here, and have A only in terms of A. And of course, R being the constant, the radius of the circle. So let's do that. We have step number five. I'm going to take R squared is equal to A squared plus 1 over 4 B squared. So we have R squared minus A squared equals 1 over 4 B squared. Or B can be written as 2 times the square root of r squared minus a squared. So I take the square root of both sides, I bring the 4 over here, well of course the square root of 4 is 2, bring it over here, and that, has, that now gives me the right relationship between b and a. And that I can plug in here. So now I have the equation, a equals a times 2 times the square root of r squared minus a squared. And now I'm ready to take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero in order to solve for a. So step six, let's take the derivative a prime is equal to, I'll factor out the two, and now I realize I have a product. So I'll take the first times the derivative of the second, which is one half times r squared minus a squared to the minus one half power times the derivative of what's inside, that would be times a minus two a plus the second, the square root of r squared minus a squared, times the derivative of the first, which is times 1. Just so that you see that we didn't forget about that. And of course, I need to close the bracket. All right. The next thing I should do is, well, I can simplify things just a little bit. Um, when I multiply the 2, uh, and um, bring this down and multiply times 2 and minus and oh well, let's see here. We have a prime is equal to minus 2a squared divided by the square root of r squared minus a squared. I think that's good, right? So we have a squared, we have a minus, we have 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then over here we have plus 2 times the square root of r squared minus a squared. And here's a good little trick. If you now factor out an r squared minus a squared to the minus one half power, or one over that, so I'll show you, a prime is equal to one over the square root of r squared minus a squared, and then multiply, oh, I can also factor out a two, can I? All right, so I'll factor out a two over that, and then multiply that times what's left. So we have a minus a squared and a plus r squared minus a squared. So what I've done here is if I factor out a 1 over r squared minus a squared, this becomes this quantity squared times 2, but I factor out a 2, which is over here. I have an a squared, a minus a squared from over here, and that makes things a whole lot easier. Simplifying that even a little bit more, I can write this as 2 divided by the square root of r squared minus a squared 
times a minus 2a squared plus r squared. There we go. Now I'm ready to set that equal to 0. So when I do that, let me go over here. So still step number 6. We have a prime equals 0 is equal to 2 divided by the square root of r squared minus a squared times the quantity minus 2a squared plus r squared. Whenever you set the derivative equal to 0 and you have a denominator, you can actually ignore the denominator because if the numerator is equal to 0, nobody cares about the value of the denominator. And whenever there's a constant in the numerator, we can ignore that as well because we can divide both sides by 2 and eliminate that constant. Therefore, we can determine then that 0 is equal to minus 2a squared plus r squared, and we could solve this equation for a, which is a whole lot easier. So that's step number 7. So we have 2a squared plus, oop, not plus, I'm leaving the r squared on the other side, equals r squared, or a squared is equal to uh, r squared divided by 2, and if I take the square root of both sides, I can say that a is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times r, which can also be written as the square root of 2 over 2 times r. So now I have a relationship for the value of a in terms of r. That gives us the height of the rectangle. What about the width of the rectangle, b? Well, I can then plug that in here and see what we get. b is equal to 2 times the square root of r squared minus a squared. Now a squared is r squared divided by 2, which means that this is equal to 2 times the square root of r squared minus a half r squared, which is 1 half r squared. And this can be simplified as 2 divided by the square root of 2 times r. Now let's write that down. b can now be written as 2 divided by the square root of 2 times r. Now, an interesting note, what if we take half of b right here, b divided by 2? Well, b divided by 2 is equal to half of this value, which is 1 over the square root of 2 times r, which is the same as the square root of 2 over 2 times r, which means that half of b is exactly the same as a, which means that this area right here is an exact square, and this area right here is a square as well. Now to find the total area, and I'm running out of board space, so let me come over here. This is equal to a, which was determined to be the square root of 2 over 2 times r, times b, which was 2 divided by the square root of 2 times r. Of course, that cancels out, and we end up with r squared as the total area of the largest rectangle that fits in a semicircle. And that's how it's done.